Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I'm Shikha, your host on behalf of Consultees with ClearTax. Let us all welcome Mr. Kunal Gudraja. He has done his article shift from Delight Huskin and Sales Chartered Accountant Scrutiny and has completed his CA in 2009. He is also renowned speaker in Nagpur region on the topics ranging from GST, financing, and subsidy on various platforms, including ICAI and trade body. Currently heading the indirect tax financing and internal audit of the firm. He also look after day-to-day -day affairs of the firm. He has also completed diploma of information system auditor. Words will fall short to count his achievements. So without taking too much time, let's hear from the person itself over to you, Mr. Kunal. Please lead the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. First of all, I would like to thank uh, consultees for inviting me to this platform to share my knowledge about subsidies, which I have been practicing since last five to 10 years. So subsidy is basically a form of, uh, I will start the presentation. So subsidy is basically a grant from the government in the form of financial assistance, which the industry does not have to repay back. So it's basically a way of incentivizing people so that more and more people uh, become entrepreneurs and start their own industries. And in, the, in this process, the industrialization will increase and the country will develop. So the subsidies are there on all types of industries. But today our topic is uh, mainly with, it will cover textile industries. So uh, we will be discussing about central and state subsidies, uh, which are applicable to uh, textile industries. So uh, we'll be going one by one. So why, uh, but the focus is on textile industry more than the other industries. Basically textile industry plays an important role in the national economy going to its major contribution to the GDP. Around 4% of the GDP is because of the textile industries. It, in, uh, the production capacity, the employment generation, then the export revenue from the textile industry is huge. So the government's focus on textile industry is also much larger than other industries. So it employs a large number of people. Approximately 5 crore people are being employed by the textile industry. And it has the second largest industrial capacity in the world the Indian textile industry. It's so huge. The exports, the exports from the textile industry accounts for 13% of the total exports of the country. The ready-made garments of India has been divided into three segments, the domestic market, international market, and the industrial market. So the international market, 19% of the total ex uh, production is exported. So it is huge. And basically the Indian, uh, the landscape of India is such that plenty of raw material for textile industries available here. So the farmers grow a lot of cotton, silk, wool here. And the government wants that this raw material, which the farmers grow, should be converted into value addition and finished product should be produced from it so that uh, from the farmer till the end product, the industries, everybody get benefited out of it. So the Indian government has a lot of focus on textile industry and it wants this industry to grow. And that's why they are uh, sort of incentivizing it and uh, trying to promote it and hence they are giving a lot of sub subsidies to the textile industry which will be which will be seen in the coming presentation so india is a major exporter of raw metal as i told you so the government wants that the raw metal which is exported it's good but uh, we are importing finished goods so they want that the raw metal which we export should not be exported but it should be value added and a concept of fiber to fashion has been introduced. Fiber means the basic raw metal, the cotton silk, and it should be converted to fashion. That means the final finished products, the goods, uh, clothes, so that a value addition is done and a higher price is being realized by the country. So the government wants that instead of ex uh, raw metal being exported, the finished goods should be exported and hence the textile industries should be promoted. India has got a lot of strategic strengths. The availability of raw metal here is in plenty skilled manpower cheap labor because of the huge population cheap labor is available in india and the production costs are very low here so these are one of the more very good strengths of our, our country and with the common current government focusing a lot in on in the road connectivity and infrastructure almost every hook and look 
corner of our country is is being connected by roads so even the villages from where the raw material uh, from where the farmers grow the raw material like cotton silk wool they get easily get transported to the uh, industries which are there in the urban areas or the urban industrial areas so india has a lot of strategic strength which is not being fully utilized so the government is therefore promoting this and giving subsidies so that uh, the, the people uh, are get more interested and they get, get take this benefit and start more and more of textile industries so what are the sources of these subsidies from where uh, if suppose a person is uh, putting up a textile unit in maharashtra so from where all uh, he can get these subsidies we'll be discussing about these this so uh, in in terms of state we'll be discussing only about maharashtra but there is also a central textile department uh, and from the central textile department anywhere if you put up a textile unit it is applicable to that state textile department will be discussing only about maharashtra state and state district industry center this also will be discussing about maharashtra dic so if a person is putting up a textile unit say in vidarbha or in near nagpur region or uh, mumbai region he can get subsidy from central textile state textile as well as state district industry centers that is the state dic and what what all subsidies he will get what what is the amount of subsidy he will get we will be discussing in the coming presentation so first and foremost from the central department uh, the subsidy name is atafs the uh, this subsidy has been going on from a very long time from 2005 6 first it was uh, tafs then it became r tafs then rr tafs then m tafs and currently the subsidy which is uh, going on is atafs which means amended technology upgradation fund scheme so what is this subsidy what is the period of this scheme for whom it is applicable we'll discuss so the duration of this eight of subsidy is from 13 january 2016 to 31st march 2022 so any unit which has been getting its loan sanction after 13 january 2016 or it is implementing or commencing its production after 13 january 2016 and it is doing all the effective steps after 13 january it is purchasing the land or it is putting up a unit after 13 january 2016 it will be covered under atafs so all new as well as expansion if suppose already a unit is there before 13 january and it is doing expansion during this period this unit will also be covered under atafs so what is the subsidy he will get and what is the name of that subsidy in under atafs the subsidy name is credit linked subsidy credit linked subsidy the name is such because the only units which have taken loan from banks they will only be eligible for subsidy subsidy under atafs so the name is credit linked that's why the name is credit linked subsidy it is at a prescribed rate the rate prescribed by the atafs on the capital cost of capital investment done by the entity in the textile set, sector only on the technology upgradation of the mach machine the basic cost of the machine that will be eligible so the credit link subsidy is eligible on the basic cost of the machine only on the technology upgradation of the machine if you do a lower technology if you take a lower technology machine as prescribed by the atafs then this uh, subsidy won't be applicable who will decide whether the technology is upgraded or not the atafs have uh, published a list in each sector what is the prescribed level of technology you have to take so if you take a prescribed level technology or a higher technology then you will be covered under this scheme so which all units what all units we have to put so to avail this subsidy or which all units are eligible so seven types of units are there weaving and knitting processing of fibers technical textiles garments and made up handloom silk and jute one of the most important points which they have added here is technical textile it almost covers very many things like anything which you make from cotton jute wool and it is not only used for uh, clothes it can be used for anything uh, like sanitary napkins uh, bandages uh, surgical cotton anything which uh, for which you the raw material you have used as excel but it is used for a different purpose any technical purpose even that is covered under the eight of scheme and it is covered under the heading technical textile and the government has <coughs> taking a huge focus on technical textile and it is giving huge amount of subsidy mainly to the technical textiles we will see it in our coming presentation so what is now the main thing what is the amount of subsidy if you put up a unit and uh, you will ask you what 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 is the amount of subsidy that, that you will get if suppose you are putting a weaving unit or you are putting a technical textile unit so what is the amount which you will be getting from the government that is basically 15% on the basic cost of the machine so suppose if you are putting up a unit 
uh, of say uh, in which you have uh, installed a machine of amount 2 cr so you will be getting 30 lakhs 15% of 2 cr 30 lakhs rupees of capital subsidy under atfs this is apart from all other uh, remaining subsidies under atfs you will get 15% on the basic cost of the machine excluding all the taxes if it is under technical textile or garmenting so if it is under weaving for brand new shuttle shuttle less looms 10% subject to an upper limit of 20 CR. In garment and technical, upper limit is 30 CR. So basically, up to 200 C, uh, CR you can put up a machine. So that is huge. So it is also covering large scale and medium scale units, which are uh, installing a big amount of machinery or uh, whose amount is much larger. They can also be covered under this. The composite unit. What is a composite unit? Composite unit means two or more uh, chain, value-added chain is covered under the same unit. Suppose a uh, unit is having a spinning unit as well as a garmenting unit under the single entity. So it will be covered under composite unit. So in that also 15% subject to an upper limit of 30 CR. But if the cate category is more than 50% of the eligible product project cost. So 15% you can uh, remember that it Mota Moti 15% on the basic machine cost, you get the subsidy under ATOPS. So, but there are many important con considerations like in every you go to shop and you see there are lots of terms and conditions for every purchase, discounts if any are offered. Similarly, in subsidy also, there are many important considerations which you have to take care of <coughs> if you want to avail the subsidy from the government. So, what are some of the most important considerations which I felt should be uh, mentioned here? <coughs> It, uh, the specifications for the technology which I told that it should be a tech, it's a technology upgradation fund scheme. So the specifications is being prescribed annually by the department. So uh, which uh, they regularly publish it on their website. Machinery suppliers, they are also specifically mentioned by the department. So if you want to purchase a machine from say a particular supplier and he's not prescribed by the textile uh, department, can you take subsidy? The answer is yes, you can take, but you have to get that machinery supplier first registered with the department. So anybody can get registered with the department, but provided you should have, you should do it beforehand. Then it would be good. So uh, it should be purchased or it can be purchased from the agent. But then if it is purchased from the agent, again, then a lot of conditions you have to fulfill that uh, not a brokerage or a commission has not been marked up. The basic cost is only being uh, paid by you. So all these things will be seen by the textile department when you purchase the machinery. TMC shells, as I told you, they shall specify the indicative list of manufacturers, but you can add on that. Machineries with lower technology won't be applicable. So you have to see that only the high, uh, good technology and the current modern technologies are being used. This list is only suggestive and it regularly gets updated. Even the machinery uh, technologies, the machinery suppliers and the machinery persons. Second hand machinery are not eligible only new machineries is eligible under ATFs. accessories up to 20 percent of the cost of machinery uh, it is eligible you can uh, cover it under the uh, cost of the machinery and machinery shall not be disposed of before 10 years you cannot sell the machine uh, this is to avoid any scam or something because people will then purchase take the subsidy and then sell out the machinery so the intention of the government won't be solved they want to generate employment, generate industrialization. So for that, the machinery or the unit should run for at least 10 years. So uh, what you have to do for getting this subsidy? So uh, you have selected a particular uh, stream that, yes, I will go into this uh, industry. I will put up this technical textile unit. This is the land where I will put up. This is the bank from which I have to take the loan. So after that, you have to apply to this department and you have to take a UID number. That is a unique identification number. It's basically a provisional approval that, yes, this is the amount of subsidy you will be getting after your machine is installed and after we have jointly inspected or we have checked that everything is correct, then you will be eligible for this subsidy. So first of all, you have to apply this UID. It's a full process is online. So you have to uh, give all the details on the website to the department that this is the KYC. This is the this is my plant production capacity. This is uh, this is my projections, what I will be doing. Everything, everything, the whole biodata of the manufacturing unit, you have to put up there. And then they scrutinize and they see whether it basically falls under that uh, primary uh, sort of things. And then they give the UID number. But it is not a guarantee that you will get the, get the subsidy. But it is uh, 
estimated as a provisional approval i can say after that a joint inspection is done by the bank by the textile department and by a regional association team with and then they see whether you have properly installed and you have paid for the machinery or not without payment of the machinery you cannot get the subsidy so first of all you have to pay from your own pocket or definitely from loan because your uh, the term loan for the machinery is mandatory here so this scheme is credit linked and only unit 7 term loan of minimum 50% of eligible machine cost they will only be eligible for applying for this uid otherwise uid also won't be so they see the basic conditions whether the basic checklist has been followed or not for giving the uid minimum repayment period for the term loan should be 3 years for msme this full subsidy after the joint inspection has been done will be released in one go and no installment nothing this is a capital subsidy nothing no uh, interest nothing all whatever amount you have paid to the machinery and if it is applicable then 15% of the machine cost will be given to you in full one go machinery purchased after the sanction of term loan only will be eligible and this application has to be done within 6 months from the date of sanction of the loan so this is all about central subsidy with uh, atfs which we, we call it now there are a, a lot of procedural aspects of it which we have to uh, rigorously follow otherwise even a small condition if not followed the subsidy may be foregone so now we uh, go on to the next subsidy which is the state which is pertaining to maharashtra state and it is the state textile policy of uh, 2018 to 23 earlier it was uh, 2011 to 17 and now the maharashtra state has come, on, come up with a new state textile policy 2018 to 23 earlier the maharashtra state was all, uh, was also giving subsidy to this textile units and it was interest subsidy but uh, there was a lot of monitoring issues so now they sh they also shifted to capital subsidy because it is easier uh because monitoring is only one time and then they can regularly give the subsidy but in interest subsidy every year they have to monitor so the state excel policy also they have introduced capital subsidy which will be seen so what are the objectives of the state excel policy the objectives are more or less the same for the state and the center why they want to give the subsidy they want to put a fiber to fashion value chain they want to generate employment and they have to ensure that the uh, development of the textile industry is there in the cotton producing areas silk producing areas wherever the raw material is there special focus is done on processing knitting hosiery and garmenting units even the stand alone embroidery units they are uh, giving subsidy to stand alone embroidery units if, if you have 10 uh, 10 garmenting uh, machines say small small uh, knitting machines even that is covered to ensure that pollution free industries are being uh, installed to increase the silk weaving business even the non conventional yarn which uh, is now growing like bamboo banana coir out of this whatever products are being manufactured even that is covered under the state textile policy the wool and uh, last but not the least the technical textiles even the state textile policy is emphasizing on technical textiles so what does textile components in in 18 to 23 textile policy state textile policy includes like we saw in the Uh, central tufts here also some uh, they have included a list of industries which are uh, which are being covered so one of the most important difference in the industries which are covered in the eight tufts in the state textile is the cotton ginning and pressing which is the basic industry after the cotton is processed like uh, it is covered in state textile policy but it is not covered in the central eight tufts which was earlier there but now it has been removed removed so the state tufts has covered the cotton ginning and pressing units which is a big plus point for maharashtra cotton ginning and pressing units and uh, next is spinning which is covered both in atfs and uh, state tufts weaving technical textile is covered both where knitting hosiery garment apparel these units are being covered in state textiles processing of fiber garment made up units non conventional yarns as i said earlier expansion of these textile units even expansion uh, is being covered here uh, textile parks wool sectors and and many other textile units which have not been mentioned here but they can be covered so what is the subsidy under the state of scheme we saw under the eight of z 15% of the eligible machine cost was eligible under the state uh, textile policy you can see uh, a you good percentage of amount is there so for if you are uh, installing a processing unit or say knitting technical textile unit or knitting unit you will be getting uh, 40% of the subsidy 40% is the rate and uh, if it is a spinning unit 25% you can see it's the rate so this 25% is again on the basic cost of the machine 
so it's a huge huge amount i can say if you are installing uh, if you are uh, installing a machine of say 1 cr 15% you can get from a tufts and 40% you can get from state tufts so this is this amounts to 55% so one out of 1 cr 55 lakhs is the subsidy plus this is not done now there is much more so if it uh, if the unit uh, subsidies to sc st and minority category it is 45% in case of processing units of technical textile knitting and but in case of spinning it is uh, 30% and in case of composite units it is 40% so you can see it's in the range of 40 to 50 most of the cases plus if you are installing this unit or you you are putting up this unit in the vidarb area uh, the government is more favoring it and uh, it is more ready to give further subsidies It, uh, it is incentivizing people more so 20% more you can see additional cap capital subsidy if you are installing a technical textile unit in vidarb area so total amount is 40 plus 20 60 so 60% on the of the basic cost of the machine you will be getting from state tufts and 15% from center tufts so 75% it's huge amount i, I should say <coughs> any any person who is into industry will say that this can act as a boost up or it can uh, repay the whole term loan 75% of the machine is used so if you are uh, putting up a unit of say 1 cr 75 lakhs will be paid as subsidy from the government so the whole term loan can be repaid back further it is not done here there is more much more so additional subsidies uh, if, if you are putting up forward and backward integration along with that 5% more is there so if technical textile unit can uh, if it puts up a forward integration it can get up to 80% 80% of the machine cost as subsidy so you can see in the state excel the percentage is much better uh, it is ranging from 40 to 60% and in eight of it was 15 so this is huge subsidy but here it is in installment unlike in uh, eight of where it was in one go here it is in installment the first installment will be given 30% of the eligible amount after 12 months from the start of production second installment will be 30% after 24 months from the start of production and third installment will be 40% of the eligible amount after 36 months from the start of production so this even then uh, it is mentioned here three years but sometimes it takes four to five years because the production of the unit it takes one year and then you apply the subsidy sometimes the funds get released raised. so we can uh, take mota moti five years in within five years you can get this whole subsidy so projects which projects are eligible under the scheme projects for which long term as i said the eight of was uh, credit link here also it is uh, also credit link so third, if it is uh, projects for which long term loan has been approved for machinery under central tufts they will be eligible ginning and pressing units for which long term loan has been approved till 31 23 by banks they will also be eligible plus the state government has also incentivized people who are putting up units from their own funds unlike the central tufts so uh, even the self financed projects which we call here even those are eligible under the state tufts so it is not necessary in state tufts to take a loan from the bank unlike the eight tufts which uh, considers that only the people who take loan from the bank they are in need of subsidy the state department does not think like that and they are incentivizing people even uh, if you are putting up the own unit, unit from your own fund so the self financed projects are also eligible the procedure is different for the self finance and the projects which are financed from the bank uh, but more or less uh, both are eligible for subsidy so this was from the state textile and the central textile and the subsidies which are ap applicable but this is not done here even the maharashtra dic department uh, also gives subsidy for units uh, for textile units and also uh, package scheme of incentives which they have, which which the subsidy name is package scheme of incentive incentives so not only textiles all the manufacturing units are covered under the package scheme of incentives except some exceptions so uh, if a person is putting up a textile unit in vidarb or maharashtra he will be eligible for central tufts a tufts and third is package scheme of incentives which we'll see now so what is the objective so more or less the same objectives of the package scheme of incentives the states all want to incentivize they give they want to give a global edge to the industries in the states they want to accelerate the industrial growth and to sustain the development to create additional opportunities to increase the export to uh, emphasize on balanced regional development so the objectives are more or less the same what is the period of operation for this psi 2019 it is applicable from 1st april 2009 to 31st march 
so uh, within this five year period if any unit is coming up it is uh, or it is under expansion um, everything will be covered under this scheme so next what are the eligible industrial units the industries which are listed in the first schedule of the industries manufacturing enterprises as defined in the msme act or the info information technology and bank technological manufacturing units all these units eligible units will be covered under this scheme the textile units will be definitely will be covered the grain units the dairy vegetable processing units consumer food packed foods non alcoholic beverages like fruits and vegetables all these units will be covered under the package scheme of in incentives only secondary and tertiary food processing units shall be eligible for processing the primary food processing units will not be covered here so the secondary and tertiary food processing uh, which are there they will be covered under this the units manufacturing the following products uh, definitely shall not be covered like beer cigarette gutka and all the products which are banned by the central and state government they won't be covered now uh, you will ask me that uh, will we get this subsidy from all the departments because state tax is also state department and dic is also state department so in dic whatever the uh, subsidy you have received from the state tax that will be subtracted so uh, because it's the same state government so they have put up a limit if you are getting it from state tax the amount which you have received from the state tax will be deducted here and the remaining amount you can get from the dic but yes central you can get the whole amount so what is the uh, financial incentives all new msme units in small units large units as well as mega units they will be eligible for this basket of incentives what are these basket of in incentives so the and on how we calculate this basket of incentives basically all the subsidies are linked to the investment which you do in the industry even the package scheme of incentives is linked to the investment which you have the gross fixed capital investment which you do in an industry it is linked to the it is linked to the investment which you do so the aggregate fiscal incentives provided by the uh, state government shall not exceed this total fixed capital investment which you do we will see what is that so suppose uh, your industry is falling in vidarbh area uh, and you do an investment of 1 cr in land building plant and machinery so you will be eligible for subsidy up to 80% that means 80% of 1 cr that is 80 lakhs 80 lakhs will be the eligible subsidy amount to you and it is the basket of incentives which will be covered under this so uh, there will be a lot many subsidies which uh, which will be covered but what uh, the total quantum of incentives will be 80 lakhs uh, if your industry is in vidarbha because the maximum ceiling for the basket of incentives in vidarbha is 80% if it is in no industry district or nexalism affected area it will be 100% if it is in a b c d area then it uh, depending on the area the percentages are classified these areas are classified by the msme act and they have defined the areas based on the uh, level of industrialization in that particular region uh, the mumbai and the surrounding areas which are very well developed are covered under a and b the lesser developed areas are covered under d d plus vidar is covered as weather based taken up separately but and d plus area which are less developed is taken separately so this is the classification and they have uh, specified the percentage of amount on the total investment which they will give for if um, in whichever area you put the industry even the eligibility period they have specified for how many years this will be eligible so if you are putting up a industry in weather area it, uh, the eligibility period is 10 years so 80 lakhs will be given to you if you put up an industry of say 1 cr fixed capital investment 80 lakhs will be given to you in the form of subsidy over a period of 10 years the eligibility period they have defined this quant of incentives for food and agro eligible units and units carrying out industry for activity will be 20% over and above the limits so all the units with artificial intelligence units like robotics and they are being given additional incentives so that uh, the government wants to promote promote these units more in eligible for incentives equivalent to 80% of the incentives eligible to new units so expansion units if suppose your uh, your unit is under expansion already the unit is there and you are further expanding it further putting up a uh, production capacity increasing the production capacity so the uh, total quantum of incentives will be 80% of the total incentives which is eligible so if you are putting up a unit in vidarbha already 80% you are eligible but if it is under expansion 80% of 80% so 64% will be eligible on the gross fixed capital investment it will be the total quantum of the basket of incentives that will be available to you
how this basket will be covered we will see so uh, what is the definition of msme uh, recently if uh, you might be if you are in touch with the notifications of the rbi you must have seen that msme definition has been changed but the <coughs> definition from the state department has still not been changed and it is still uh, because the gr has not been released by the maharashtra state uh, government so the earlier definition of as per the msme act is applicable to maharashtra state so if your unit having, is having an investment in plant and machinery up to rupees 25 lakhs your unit will be classified under micro if your unit is having an investment from 25 lakhs to 5 crore your unit will be classified under small and if your unit is having an investment in plant and machinery from 5 cr to 10 cr your unit will be classified under medium so depending on the investment in plant and machinery your category is defined whether you are a micro small or medium and units whose total gross fixed capital investment is up to 50 cr units outside the definition okay so package scheme of incentives meaning of new and expansion units what is the new unit and what is an expansion unit? we will see that so a unit which has been set up and is in production on or at any time prior to april 2019 that will be a expansion unit which has been set up at any time production prior to april 2019 so uh, an unit which has been granted an eligibility certificate that will be a already been granted an eligibility certificate this certificate is granted from dic so if it is already granted before 2019 you will be under, covered under expansion unit so but uh, suppose uh, what what some there will be some criteria for expansion units if there is a machinery which you have already installed and you are installing a higher production uh, higher production capacity machinery whether you will be covered under expansion yes but it, it should satisfy the conditions that you should have 25 percent increase in the production capacity 25 percent increase in the fixed capital investment and even the labor there should be an increase in the labor so then only it will be covered under expansion so the new unit is one which is not an existing unit and at least one of the effective steps is completed on or after 1st April 2019 and it is not formed as a result of re-establishment or mere change of ownership. An expansion is one which is already set up and there is an increase in the production capacity. So this is the difference between new unit and expansion unit. Why we are focusing on this is because the subsidy amount depends whether it's a new unit or an expansion unit. The rate of subsidy depends on that. The investment shall be regarded if it satisfies the conditions as i told you 25 percent of uh, the gross fixed capital investment should be there the minimum investment should be 25 lakhs in case of msmes 5 crores in case of non ms non msmes and 10 crores in case of lsis that is large scale the additional investment should be more than 25 percent there should be an increase in employment at least to the extent of 10 percent of the existing level and only two number of expansions are permitted in this new PSI scheme. Earlier it was uh, n number of expansions, but now it has been limited to only two number of expansions. So what is the actual investment? What, what all investments will be covered? On what percentage this 80% which I told you, what on what percentage this will be applied? So whatever investment which you do in the plant for land, that will be covered. Whatever investment which you do for the development of the unit, cost of development of the location of the unit, that will be covered. Whatever investment you do in the building, anything for construction of the building, for uh, including the administrative building, that will be covered under the uh, fixed capital investment. Then uh, amount which you pay to the electri electricity distribution company, that will be covered under the fixed capital investment. The amount definitely, the amount which you put up for plant and machinery, for acquiring the plant and machinery at site, that will be covered if you are putting up a cold storage unit along with uh, the unit so the the cost of cold storage will also be covered under the fixed capital investment the installation and charges and the pre-operative expenses which most of us miss out they are also covered under the fixed capital uh, investment if for putting up a plant uh, you incur some charges for traveling or uh, uh, project uh, formation fees all this will be covered under the pre-operative expenses and even they can be covered under the fixed capital investment and the subsidy amount will also be released on this. So this is the actual fixed capital investment, the uh, total amount on which the subsidy is eligible. So as in all subsidies, there are some conditions atta attached to it, which we'll see. So only the new fixed assets which are uh, acquired shall be covered under the under this scheme, not the second hand machineries. The project appraisal shall be done 
by the lender of the term loan if the term loan is not there even then the project has to be appraised by a banking agency or an nbfc credit society only imported second hand machinery having residual value of minimum 10 years shall be considered towards gross fixed capital investment uh, so the imported second hand machinery should have a minimum life of 10 years the assets on which a uh, benefit as a will cannot be disposed of sold without prior permission and it, do, it should at least cover the period of the subsidy so at least 10 years should be there, uh, you know you should have to you will have to run the unit if you are availing the subsidy and any gross increase in the fixed capital investment as a result of replacement shall not have any additional benefit so if you are replacing a existing machinery that will not be covered so how much time uh, do you get for making such investment there is a time period for putting up a unit so for msme 3 years period has been in so in the period of 3 years whatever investment you will make that will be covered under the gross fixed capital investment on on the basis of which the subsidy amount will be determined for lsi 4 years has been uh, prescribed and for mega and ultra units 5 years has been prescribed what is the amount of financial incentives now you, we have determined we have put up a unit of say 2 cr for gross fixed capital investment uh, we have put up the unit in vidarbha so 80% of the amount will be eligible to us so it is 1 1 crore 60 lakhs but how will we get this and in what form how will that be determined so they have uh, taken a basket of subsidies uh, so what are are these subsidies first and foremost is industrial promotion subsidy that is the ips so whatever you, uh, for getting this 1.6 cr over a period of 10 years you will have to sell your finished products and whatever you will sell on that portion you will charge as gst to the customers that you will collect from the customer and you will pay to the government after you have paid to the government the total amount which during the year which you have paid that we, you you can get it reimbursed from the government in the form of this subsidy so 1.6 if you are putting up a unit of say 2 cr 1.6 cr is eligible 1.6 cr over a period of 10 years so say 16 lakhs will you, be, you will be you will be getting subsidy 16 lakhs every year in the form of psi uh, subsidy so in that this ips will also be covered so if you are paying an amount of 16 lakhs sgsc that year the whole 16 lakhs you will be getting it reimbursed from the state dic interest subsidy Five uh, percent uh, per annum on term loan. So, if you have taken a term loan uh, for setting up the unit, five percent per uh, per annum of the term loan will be reimbursed to you. But this will be limited to sixteen lakhs per year. So, the basket of incentive has been fixed uh, that this is the amount of subsidy you will be getting. And under this, all these subheads are there. One is IPS, second is interest, third is uh, uh, exemption from ele electricity duty. This is out of basket of incentives. This you will definitely get if you are eligible under the PSI. So exempt, it is uh, if your industry is eligible, it will be exempted from payment of electricity duty during the applicable eg eligibility period. Also, power tariff will be there. So one rupee per unit you will be getting for the first period of three years from the date of commencement of commercial production. So whatever you, uh, electricity you have paid, one rupee per unit you will be getting that. Even if you, uh, even for purchasing the land for putting up the unit. you have to pay stamp duty even that is exempted so this will also be covered under the basket of incentives so 116 lakh under the 1.6 uh, cr which we are discussing even the stamp duty will be covered so uh, you can purchase the land and you don't have to pay any stamp duty you have to make an application to the dic they will give you the exemption letter and on the basis of that you can get the stamp duty exempted additional incentives for strengthening ms means so apart from this there are further incentives technology upgradation here also it is covered but if you have taken technology upgradation under state terms you cannot take here there are quality certifications cleaner production measures patent regis registration any expenses you have done for patent registration 75% subsidy on expenses incurred limited to rupees 10 lakhs for national patents and 20 lakhs for international patents that is covered 75% of the cost of water audit up to rupees 1 lakh Energy audit seventy five percent of the cost of energy audit limited to rupees two lakhs. All these are covered under this PSI scheme. What is the minimum operative period? I, as I told you, eligibility period plus five years. This means if you are uh, eligible for a subsidy for say ten years, at least you have to run the unit for fifteen years. This is the minimum operative period. If it's a medium and large scale unit, eligible period plus seven years, and if it's a mega unit, eligibility period. Plus 10 years, so this is a minimum operative period that has been prescribed by the DIC. 
So what are what are the, these were the subsidies which we discussed for MSME, but there are many uh, there are these subsidies also el eligible for large scale industries. What are large scale industries? Industries having investment more than medium manufacturing in enterprises as defined under the MSME Act up to FCI of rupees 50 CR. So if your fixed capital investment is up to rupees 50 CR, you will be covered under the large scale industries, but less than mega projects. So what is the minimum? qualifying fixed capital investment if your industry is set up in Vidarbha area the minimum uh, qualifying fixed investment amount should be rupees 100 CR okay so this is the definition of LSI what are the financial incentives which are available to LSI the on the total gross fixed capital investment if your unit is set up in A and B area 25 percent of the total gross fixed capital investment if your unit is set up in d plus area 70 percent and if you are setting up a unit in vidar marath uh, vidar marathwada then it will be 80 percent and if it is in nexalism affected areas and no industry district 100 percent of the gross fixed capital investment will be eligible to you what are mega and ultra projects mega and ultra projects the investment criteria is higher so if you are putting up a minimum fixed capital investment of amount of say rupees 200 CR in no district area, it will be covered under mega. If it is 350 CR in Vidarbha area, minimum you have to put 350 CR in Vidarbha area. So the minimum uh, amount has been defined for mega projects. And the quant quantum of incentives for the mega projects, ultra projects, shall be decided <coughs> by a higher power co committee under the chairmanship of Chief Secretary Government of Maharashtra. They have not defined this set of uh, subsidy for mega projects but it is, it is it is decided by the high power committee under the chairmanship of chief secretary how the cabinet subcommittee for mega projects under the chairmanship of chief minister of maharashtra will have the powers to sanction customized package of incentives for mega ultra projects so these subsidies are only some of the core subsidies which i have discussed to textile units there are many further subsidies even the labor uh, even the pfesic which uh, we deduct uh, the employer contribution of the uh, labors which the employer have to pay even that gets reimbursed if new eligible uh, employees have been employed by the units so even uh, that is a very big subsidy which most of the uh, units don't claim so there apart from these there are many more incentives and support which the entity can claim and if all the benefits are properly claimed and business is running at a normal gp any textile unit or any manufacturing good manufacturing unit can become self-sufficient free cash unit, unit within three to five years so the subsidy is a very good uh, thing which the government has introduced and it is a very good way of uh, incentivizing and promoting industrialization and I, I believe everybody should fully utilize this and uh, fully take care of this and anybody who's setting up a unit should definitely uh, take this up with the government this is all with regards to subsidy so anybody if uh, anyone has any doubts i am uh, here available okay One of the question is whether you have to industry has to be put up in a uh, industrial uh, zone. Yes, industry has to be put up in an industrial zone for taking up a PSI uh, subsidy uh, uh, for te te uh, textile uh, state tufts. Yes, if it is not, uh, even if it is not under uh, the industrial zone, the state tufts can, can be taken. So for that, it is not necessary. But for PSI, it is definitely uh, it has to be in, under the industrial industrial zone. Expansion, uh, yes, expansion, uh, there, there should be more than 25% of the production capacity and more than 25% of gross fixed capital investment, then only it will be covered under expansion. Yes, two, uh, two or three uh, uh, products can be done uh, in a particular uh, industry. It is called diversification. Even the if, if two or three different te textile products are uh, being manufactured, even that will be covered uh, under the state tufts and the A tufts, and even under PSI. So any number of products or any different category of products can be manufactured. It should be just properly registered. So another question is which uh, of CA AP Agrawal, which is the best according to you among the three? <laughs> all three are good. You have to take uh, benefit of all the three subsidies. Uh, all sub subsidies have their own uh, because the PSI is different. It depends on the sale. You have to uh, sale the goods only. Then you, have, you can get the GST back. 
uh, and eight of and state of both are capital subsidy so uh, i think you should uh, take the benefit of all the three if you are eligible why 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 should you avoid it or you should take all the benefits so all three subsidies are good yes anyone else are we done sir yeah okay thank you sir thank you so much for providing this very informative session i hope everyone must have learned something new today and a big thanks to all viewers too i hope you enjoyed the session let us know your feedback on our official page once again thank you everyone and have a great evening thank, thank you, you.